Namaste. So this third chapter of the first part of Kata Upanishad contains an extended metaphor, a simile based on the concept of a chariot. And while this is a useful way to distinguish between those who control their senses and those who don't or can't, uh, it lacks a certain finesse <laughs> because it's not exactly based on the structural content of the Vedic teaching regarding the physical universe. The physical universe is based on three gunas. Uh, the word guna can mean quality or it can mean a mode. In other words, a specific kind of cause and effect. Uh, within certain limits of style and content, huh? or it can mean a color or a shape or, you know, so many things. But guna, the three guna, the three modes of nature are known as goodness, passion, and ignorance. And the way you tell them apart is by their results. And this is explained very nicely in the 18th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Verses 37, 38, and 39. Let me read verse 37. That which is like poison at first, at the end like nectar. That pleasure is declared to be sattvic, born of the purity of one's own mind. In other words, sattva, goodness, is the mode of material nature that brings one to enlightenment. That's its result. And by following the sattva guna in all one's activities, that brings you spiritual advancement, good fortune, wealth, health, happiness. I mean, all the benefits that are to be expected of righteous and holy activities. So, this pleasure in the mode of goodness is like poison in the beginning. Why? Because we have to discipline ourselves. We have to control the senses, control the mind, eat only pure things, restrict one's sleeping and other sensual activities. It's difficult. It's difficult because the body likes a certain amount of passion, depending on its modes, which are, by the way, very easily understood through Jyotish by casting the birth chart or interpreting the birth chart, one can easily see which modes of material nature and in what proportion are born with the body. So different bodies have different mixtures of these three modes. And depending on how much passion and ignorance are in the body, one will have proportionately greater difficulty attaining the mode of goodness. But it must be done. And over years, one can attain it. Not something you can do in a couple of weeks. Because the body would fight back, especially the mind. If you try to discipline, contain, or corral the mind, <laughs> uh, it's going to react. And the harder you try, the stronger the reaction. So what is needed is a gentle training of the mind over years. And this is accomplished through sadhana. Sadhana means mantras, pujas, study of the Vedas, acceptance of a spiritual master, and so on. And especially the practice of celibacy is very important to advancement in spiritual life. Because, the next verse says, that pleasure which arises from the contact of the sense organs with the objects, at first is like nectar, at the end like poison. That is declared to be rajasic. Rajas means the mode of passion. And passion is an impulsive, instinctive attraction of the senses to their objects. And everyone has experienced, huh? Everybody knows if you eat too much or drink too much 
or do anything in too much. <laughs> there are consequences. And there's suffering. You see? So even though in the beginning it seems like nectar, oh yeah, let me eat more and more, right? It seems great, right? Then you have indigestion afterwards. Ah. And the same is true of all sense pleasures. To different degrees, depending on the severity of the mode of passion. But what we're talking about is the general principle, which is, it's like nectar in the beginning and poison in the end. And the mode of ignorance, the pleasure which at first and in the sequel is delusive of the self arising from sleep, indolence, and heedlessness, that pleasure is declared to be tamasic. Tamas means the mode of ignorance, tamoguna. So what does that mean? It's delusive of the self. It leads away from the self, not towards it. So intoxication, various forms of self-delusion, insanity, madness, craziness, um, deliberate mixing up of the mind and stuff like this, and too much indulgence in sleep. Indolence means laziness. And heedlessness. Now, this is a very interesting word. Heedlessness in both the Vedic and the Buddhist traditions means not listening to the teachers, not listening to the scriptures, thinking on one's own and coming to spurious conclusions, false conclusions based on bad reasoning, which is the condition of every, every conditioned being in the material world because we have limited intelligence, limited senses, limited knowledge. How can we come to perfect conclusions based on these limits? It's not possible. So when we try to think for ourselves without any authority guiding us, we always reach bad conclusions, wrong conclusions. Huh? I mean, just read the literature, the scientific, quote unquote, <laughs> scientific literature on consciousness. I mean, there's so many bad ideas there. They're all wrong. I mean, to use a, a current saying, they're not even wrong. They're so off the beam that, I mean, it's hard to say they're even wrong because they're not even in the same universe. <laughs> but because of the limitations of human reasoning, and especially two-valued logic, we've been over this again and again, and non-Aristotelian logic is the logic of the Vedas, of the Buddhas, of the self-realized beings. So we should study this non-Aristotelian logic with uh, multiple truth values. Now, let's talk again about the mode of goodness, because that's really what we're interested in. We need to be able to recognize the motives of passion and ignorance, okay? Those desires which arise impulsively upon the contact of the senses with their object. And Bhagavad Gita, again, describes exactly how it happens, that on contemplating the objects of the senses, lust arises for them. And because of lust being frustrated, anger arises. And because of anger, one loses memory and intelligence and falls down into ignorance. So this is what happens every single time. Watch it, observe it in yourself. See how, when you become passionate about enjoying something, it leads to suffering and ignorance. Doing stupid things, huh? I mean, the stupid things that people do around sex life, for example, are just remarkable. <laughs> the nonsense that goes, go to any nightclub, huh? This is one of the really unpleasant things I had to do as a professional musician was play in nightclubs. I hated nightclubs because nightclubs are full of drunks. And drunks do and say stupid things. <laughs> They're in the mode of ignorance, trying to enjoy the mode of passion. 
But of course, they fail. The real enjoyers are in the mode of goodness. They cultivate these disciplines their whole life. And anybody who's good at something can tell you that there's a great deal of pleasure to be gained from mastering something, whether it's a musical instrument or some physical discipline, a sport, a martial art, uh, anything. That if you're really good at something, it delivers a great deal of enjoyment. Huh? So, in the same way, one should become really good at spiritual life, at sadhana, at self-discipline in the mode of goodness. And this will deliver the most enjoyable thing, which is full confidence in one's spiritual existence. That I am Brahman, aham brahmasmi, I am that Brahman, which is pure consciousness, existence, and bliss. I am immortal by nature. I do not depend on this body or this world for my existence. My existence is unconditional. So, therefore, there is no fear of death, and there is no fear of any condition of the body, so one may go through life with full confidence and full happiness, not depending on anything else. I mean, this is so wonderful. This is liberation. This is moksha. And this is attainable not by being zapped by some guru. I mean, that does not really happen. Huh? But by careful and systematic self-discipline and training over many, many years. This is the mode of goodness. And it's difficult in the beginning. We admit it's difficult in the beginning because one has to counteract so many of the impulses of the body. That's the thing we, we are inhabiting. Huh? But it controls us. And the way it controls us is by conditioning our existence with these modes of passion and ignorance. So by cultivating the mode of goodness, we can come out of that dependence. We can come to the point of independence from the body. That's the unconditioned life. And that is the real platform of pure, unalloyed happiness. And after that, Nothing can bring us down. <laughs> so that's what's being taught in this third chapter. And even though the simile of the cart or a carriage, uh, the wagon, the chariot, uh, is kind of limited, it gives the essence of the choices that we have to make in life to actually attain liberation. And they are to avoid the modes of passion and ignorance to cultivate the mode of goodness alone as far as possible. I mean, the world is so corrupt now that it's very difficult to exist in pure goodness. One has to engage in some passionate activities just to maintain the body. And the body must be maintained for sadhana because as it will be revealed later on in the Upanishad, Brahman is most easily realized in a human body on planet Earth. This is a deep, deep secret of Vedanta. But uh, it's one of those things, either in heaven or in hell, one cannot realize Brahman because the senses are so overloaded, either with pleasure or suffering. But here on Earth, you're in, right in the middle, there's not too much pleasure, not too much suffering. And one can cultivate the intelligence to see the truth and to know the ultimate form of existence, which is pure Brahman. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.